Shares in the tobacco giant Philip Morris are up 2.5% this week. The company announced it's preparing to end sales of the product that made it famous. With brands like Marlboro and Chesterfield, now the company says it's planning to stop selling cigarettes in the UK altogether by 2030. Tobacco giants have had to reinvent themselves many times over in the past century. Remember these sort of adverts? They're great to watch, if you like, but a sign of the times of a previous age when the ads used to tout the lifestyle, even the health benefits of smoking. Well, we're all wiser then, and the chorus of public health experts warning about the dangers has only grown. Some say the latest announcement is a signal of the beginning of the end for smoking in countries like the UK. And yet... UK health organisations are saying it's an empty promise. Jack Olzak is the chief executive of Philip Morris International. He joins me from Lucerne in Switzerland. Jack, um, you've heard all the arguments. You know them a million times. I'm not going to put anything new to you that you haven't been asked. Um, if it's so good to stop smoking, why not just stop selling cigarettes now? Well, if we stop selling cigarettes now, I don't think the problem will go away. Okay, because they have our competitors, they have our suppliers, etc. What we have in mind that the time is a coming that we can seriously think about, you know, comprehensive solutions to the smoking. You have a product, you have a technology, you have a science, you have evidence that the alternatives to smoking, the smoke free alternatives are vastly better. And I believe it's a time to accelerate the what we want to do with the smoking. When I make the declarations that, you know, we are ready to pull off the Marlboro cigarettes and other of our brands in the UK within 10 years, I mean it. Right. But, you know, I, I've heard no comments, right, that, you know, people are saying that this is a lip service, we don't mean it, etc. 30% of my revenue already is coming from the smoke-free products. I have a market today when the more of my revenues are coming from the smoke-free products than they're from combustible cigarettes. So we mean okay. it, we want so the talk. So, so, so to, to clarify, what you're talking about is an acceleration of the elimination of the thing you put in your mouth and that sends smoke out. Uh, you're not talking about, uh, you're still intending, you're still going full throttle, if you will, on the vapes, on all the other non-smoke alternatives that, that you're now putting more investment into. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, the best advice we can give to the smokers today is to quit. But we also know that, you know, men and men and women don't quit. And the question is, can we offer them today, you know, scientifically proven better alternatives? And the fact is that these products do exist. Technology exists to to make them <clears throat> available at scale. And the science exists to prove that these products are better, despite some critics which continuously trying to confuse smokers that the alternatives are equal or worse, actually, than the cigarettes. The net result is we are actually right. perpetuating smoke. But is this not a case, sorry, I, I mean, we, we, I don't want to take us into Alice in Wonderland territory, but is this not a case where you're, you're saying is smoking is very bad, so we're going to stop doing that and we're going to go instead give something that's not quite as bad, but still isn't very good? Well, the, the products are not the risk free, but they're vastly better than a continuing smoking. You know, if you're talking about the product where the science is approving that the products are reducing right. the exposure to the most deadly toxicants by 90, 95 percent. I mean, let's be serious. These are the vastly better product than a continuing smoking. Alternative is people will continue smoking the products as they are today. So we all operate within the territories of harm reductions, which is well recognized in other product categories. And what I am saying today, that we can accelerate solving the problem of smoking, at least by offering the alternative. But if we don't do it, people will continue smoking. So can we be serious and have these conversations and, you know, how do we solve the problem rather than what I am afraid, perpetuating smoking cigarettes, which, you know, frankly speaking, is bad for everyone. Can I talk, turn to vaccines and vaccine mandates, if I may, because we are taking the opportunity when we when we talk to CEOs of particularly large companies like yours with many employees, you can't really avoid this, can you, these days? I mean, never mind smoking issues. You know, you have to decide whether you're going to require across your various jurisdictions employees to be vaccinated. Where do you stand on this? I mean, we're heavily promoting uh, vaccinations in our facilities in many countries. We collaborate with the local health authorities to facilitate access to vaccine. I mean, my personal reflections on that thing is that while a few months ago everyone was worried, would we have enough vaccines? Now the problem turns, would we have enough people willing to take the vaccines? And that's the very serious problem. So I believe any form of encouragement 
absolutely appropriate if we want to solve that problem soon or we want to go for another three years of the same thing. Right, but but yeah, but 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 are you prepared to go? I mean, all everybody's using the same language, encouraging this, wanting that, hoping for this. But but we're at the point of 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 forcing or mandating or putting adverse consequences if you don't get vaccinated. Are you prepared to do that with your employees? Well, I'm prepared to encourage. I don't think asking a business actually or forcing people or employees to take the vaccine is the appropriate thing. I think this is a role for the national health authorities in many jurisdictions to issue such a, you know, such an order. I think, we, you know, people trying to escape a little bit the responsibility and you go to the to, to the business and you say, no, business should, what, force people to take a vaccine? I don't think is appropriate, but I am doing everything I can to popularize them, to, 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 to facilitate an access and encourage employees to take it. But I don't have the power to say to my employees that you have to take it. However, no, but I do you... believe that there are institutions who, which can do it. But you have the power to say if you don't take it, you'll have to wear a mask. You have the power to say if you don't take it, you'll yeah. be tested twice a week. And you have the power ultimately to say if you don't take it, we'll part company. Absolutely. I mean, yes, I mean, we have a full power of, you know, imposing, uh, you know, sanitary restrictions, the hygienic restrictions, etc., in order that every employee in the, you know, while upon return to the office, they feel safe. This I can do it. But, you know, I cannot go and force every, anybody to take it. I mean, people might have considerations, etc. And I do, again, believe that, you know, competent authorities should right. having a be issuing a very clear guidelines what is expected rather than, you know, we're trying to move that ball from a, one table to another and the problem is, you know, not solved until today. We will talk more, sir. Very grateful that you came on Questions Business tonight. Good to see you. Thank you.